Amen. I pray from 30 to 50 to 100 to uh, 1,000 and to thousands and thousands. And I want to announce to you the membership of the church deeper life now i i took a chill from you to allow me to be personal a little bit then i'll come back to you is that all right amen the church now in ghana deeper life is next to the membership of nigeria and because we stage on the world our leadership here our you know organization here and even this crusade we're having i've gone to many parts of nigeria i've gone this one is number one i'm saying that whatever may be the action or reaction of the people we're ministering to stay with the word. Stay with the word. The Lord will raise you up. The, the Lord will build you up. We don't swerve to error and swerve to false doctrine and swerve to moderating doctrine changing modifying the word stay with the word even in these last days the work of god will prosper in your hands in jesus name we're looking at verse 7 verse 7 tells us the people were ministering to in this end time period it says ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth but all the same we're going to keep on ministering the word and the word will bear fruit everywhere you go in jesus name number three number three now is the uh, delusion deluding perception of faithless and time pilgrims we're looking at luke chapter 18 and verse 8 luke verse, uh, chapter 18 we're looking at verse 8 I tell you that, uh, that he will avenge speedily. That is when we pray at this end time. And we have faith in God. The Lord will answer. The Lord will respond. And the Lord will avenge speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth as the Lord is about to come. In this end time period, he's looking for faith. Why? It is through faith we get saved. It is through faith he purifies our hearts and he sanctifies us it is through faith we have the blessing of abraham it is through faith we have the miracles and the wonders and the signs that he promised the church it is through faith we have everything we need any other thing whatever it is any other thing cannot give you what faith can give you and jesus said when he comes be looking for saved people but that will only happen by faith when it comes he'll be looking for people that follow peace and holiness without which no man shall see the lord and that can only happen by faith when he comes he'll be looking for the people that have received the fullness of the provision of the first coming so that they can have the privilege of the second coming and that can only happen by faith nevertheless when the son of man cometh shall he find faith on the earth the end time people will be faithless people how many things make them to be faithless they now have the you know the the 
machinery and uh, the social media and everything and they think whatever they want to get they can get all that through the men and the machinery so do they need any miracle when the son of man cometh shall he find faith on the earth i pray he'll find faith in our hearts in your heart in my heart and find faith in Jesus' name. Let's come to point number two now. Point number two, we're looking at discovering the end time passion for the harvest. In anything you want to do, if you don't have passion, if you don't have drive, you'll be looking at, am I not tired now? Am I not weak and weary now? Do I think I have the energy I used to have when I was 25, 35? Let the young people continue to do it. And I want to relax a little bit. You understand? When you have passion, you have drive within you, and you have the very mind of Christ, and you have the purpose of Christ, and the drive that Christ had, that when, you know, he started his ministry, working miracles, working miracles, healing the sick, and eventually, one of those people, Judas Iscariot, betrayed him. Now, they caught him, they arrested him, and they were now going to crucify him. And Peter, by his side, said that will not happen here he threw out his he drew out his sword and he slashed up the ear of the uh, servant of uh, Marcos or whoever and the passion the passion to heal the sick the passion to restore everything that is cut off from us at such a time with such a challenge, with such difficulty, what would you have done? And a helper, a supporter, you didn't have any sword, you don't want to fight, and you cannot fight, okay, we'll fight for you. And he drew the sword and cut off the ear. You will not have passion to heal the fellow. That fellow is an enemy, and that fellow was among the people that came to arrest me. The passion of Christ he stooped down, and he took the cut off ear and stick it back there again, still performing miracles at the time. He should have been totally weary and worn and tired. And now he's on the cross hanging there. And there were two thieves that were, that were crucified alongside. And they were talking and talking. And then one man that was going to spend his last day on earth, in the pain and he says if i'm having such pain here on earth on the cross when i get to the other side and i meet the judge of all people where how can i bear the pain and so right on the cross there hanging he looked the direction of christ and said lord he called him lord there i didn't have the opportunity to call you lord while i was still here before i came to the cross but now here on the cross as a sinner condemned sinner on earth lord remember me when you come to your kingdom you have to have passion before you can reply that man at the last hour at the greatest time of suffering in your life you have to have passion you have to have love you have to have desire for the goodness of others before you can reply today thou shalt be with me in paradise that god will give us passion that God will give us the drive from within. The love for souls that will, will reach out to them whatever is happening to us. And as God uses you to solve other people's problems, your own problems too will be solved in Jesus' name. It will solve your problem. It will carry your load. It will bear your body, but never decrease your passion and your love for souls discovering the end time passion 
for the harvest. Look at uh, Acts of the Apostle, chapter 26, and I'm reading from verse 19. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Actually, Paul at this time was before these uh, kings, Agrippa and the other fellow Felix, that uh, the fellow said, they accused this man, is worthy of death. And I cannot send him to Caesar without writing something. So they said, okay, come and talk for yourself. And instead of talking and about himself, he said, I'm talking about Jesus. I have passion. And I still have that passion. And he says, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. And I'm not about to yield. I'm not about to be crushed. I'm not about to give up my passion. As the fire grew hotter, the passion of the apostle, the passion of the man also went up. Your passion will not diminish. End time passion. End time fervor. End time drive that the Lord gives us so that we can win the lost and bring the lost to the Lord. Three things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at endowed prophets for allied end time harvest. Two together, three together. If those three that are joining together for end time harvest, A has passion. B is tagging on and wondering when are we going to stop this? When are we going to end this? And the third one is saying, maybe I should tell A that I'm fagged out. I'm weary. I'm worn. I cannot do anything anymore. And so A, instead of concentrating on the harvest, is concentrating on Helping B and helping C. No, but when the three of us, we have the passion, we have the drive, we are go-getters for the kingdom and for the Lord. And we're not trying to, you know, wipe the tears of somebody and care for the wounds of another one. We're all for the harvest before us. We endowed prophets, proclaimers, preachers, pastors, evangelists, allied for end time habits. Number two is the endued preachers for already endamaged habits. And then number three is enduring, enduring power for all endorsed Harvesters. Look at number one. Number one, endowed prophets for allied end time harvest. In James chapter 5, reading from verse 16. James 5, verse 16, confess your faults one to another. Um, when we read that, we normally, when I say we, I mean many ministers, we interpret that as confess your sins one to another that's all right that's appropriate if that's what you need to confess but you know laziness is a fault you know always looking back instead of looking forward as a fault always standing and watching like a spectator when you ought to be running as a participant, that's a fault. Procrastination, that's a fault. That I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it next week. This is rainy season. You can't evangelize now. There's no money in the church now. You cannot evangelize now. What many people are having problems in the church. And we need to settle all that before we can 
evangelize. Look at our Jerusalem. We still have many people in Jerusalem that are not converted. How can we go to Samaria? How can we go to Antioch? How can we go to Judea? That's a fault. And whatever you have been considering uh, that is stopping you from obeying the great commission as a minister, you come before the Lord and you come before your fellow ministers. Actually, I know I've been lazy. Actually, privately inside, I've been fearful. I've heard of those people I'm, I'm going to. I've heard that they are difficult and tough people. I am fearful. That's a fault. It's a terrible fault that will not make us to passionately go and do what the Lord has called us to do. Confess those faults one to another. And when you confess that, mop up the floor. What do I mean by that? The tap is running. And then you suddenly come home and you see that the floor is flooded, flooded and it's going to spoil many things. And then you start mopping the floor, mopping the floor, but the tap keeps on running, keeps on running. You'll never stop mopping the floor because the tap is still running there. What do you do? Leave the floor on the ground and close the tap. The things that run in the church that makes the floor to be flooded, that gives us scandals in the church, that gives us the judgment of the world. And they say, uh huh, church, they come to preach. They are not looking at the flood of iniquity and the flood of uh, evil and the flood of, uh, you know, antagonism within the church. And they are not looking at the flood of hatred. Look, the man touched that man's wife and the man defiled that man's uh, daughter and did this and that all the flood is there and we're mopping the floor. Close the tab. Why is that coming? Where is that coming from? Rebuke the people that need rebuke. Correct the people that need correction. And let those faults that we are confessing, let them be wiped out from the very source. But when we're all laughing and smiling, we're not even confessing the faults one to another, that man, minister, bishop, apostle, whatever, is going to do that. And we're whispering in our corner, in our houses, this is bad. Come out. If you say it is bad, in your house, come to the church and declare, this is bad. And the person will, be, it will know that I will not allow this tap of filthy water filthy behavior to keep on running but if you keep that tap running the evil is there the backsliding is there the adultery is there the fornication is there and you also you are mean you know all about it and then you bring the man and then it's all smiling and the church is clapping that's not the word. Confess your faults one to another. And pray one for another that she may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Your prayer will work. My prayer will work. If we don't close our eyes to that tap running. If we don't close our eyes to the flooded ground and to the church that the public does not respect, the world they know, outsiders they know, all the people we're going to preach to, they know that our tap is bringing out dirty water, is flooding our church, and we need to clean up. And when the world knows that we clean up and then we mop the floor and everyone now can come and we can pray for them and our prayers will be answered for them. 
the church of the living God in our nation, in every other nation, that church will grow in Jesus' name. I'm looking at verse 17. It says in verse 17, Elijah, Elias, was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And then in verse 18, and he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. From today, we're not coming to the era, to the period when our ministries will bear much fruit. But you know, you know how Elijah did it? It's in 1 Kings chapter 18. In 1 Kings chapter 18, reading from verse 21. In verse 21, and Elijah came unto all the people. Uh, you know, Elijah, everybody had been talking about him. Look at this man who was suffering. He loved heaven. Put the key in his pocket, and he went where we cannot find him. I hate that man. He have said, I hate that man. He have said, have you found me, oh my enemy? He said, yes, I found you. He didn't check him out. He wasn't afraid. A minister must hate sin, must hate bear worship must hate evil and if the people count you as their enemy not because you are fighting on mundane things but because you want to bring their heart back to the lord and, he, and elijah came unto the people and said how long hold ye between two opinions if the lord be god follow him but if Baal then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. And then he gave the litmus test and said, let's make the altar and let us put the sacrifice. And I will do that also. And whatever God, whichever God brings fire from heaven that the God was out. He said, yes, that is it. And then all those 450 uh, prophets of Baal, they search the altar. And a man was looking at them. And then he put the sacrifice, was looking at, watching them, that they will not surreptitiously, secretly bring fire there. And he cried, and he prayed, and he shouted, no fire. Well, he did that for a long time. Elijah said, come aside. And now, let me have my own chance. You will have your own chance. I said, you will have your own chance. And what those 450 prophets of Baal were not able to do when your chance comes very soon. When your chance comes very soon you will do what all those hundreds and thousands of false prophets were not able to do. You know the story? He repaired the altar. Brothers and sisters, fellow ministers, colleagues, we cannot do anything new if we don't repair the altar. If we use the same altar as the false prophets built, the same methods, the same music, the same kind of secret power, the same deception, the same ideology. If we build the altar, we say, this one is there already. And the false prophets are using it. We can use it too. And then you pray like you pray, you hollow like you hollow, and you shout like you shout. You cut yourself like that they cut themselves. You roll on the ground like they roll on the ground. Nothing else will happen. If when they did it with their method, with their magic, with their sorcery, 
with the occultism, with art drugs. If when they did, it did not work, if you do the same thing, if you walk on the same road, if you approach God, the same way they approach their bail, it will not work. He repaired the altar. He set everything in order. And he said, pour water there for, for, for. That means there are 12 barrels out there. Like the 12 tribes of Israel. And at the time of the evening sacrifice, he stepped aside. Then he looked up to heaven. And he said, God, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Israel, let the people know that I have done all these things according to thy word. That's what will work. That's what will work. When you do it according to his word, not according to your mind, according to your ideas, according to your suggestion, according to your opinion, according to his word. And then he had not prayed long and the fire came. The fire will come. Licked up all the water and burnt even the stones because he did it at his word. And when you think about Moses, he did everything according to his word. And when you look at John the Baptist, he did everything according to his word. Build that sanctuary and build that tabernacle according to the pattern which was showed thee on the mount. When you are so meticulous and you keep to the word of God and you repent from the old prophets or from the bells, prophets, idea and message, the fire of revival will come your personal life, the fire will come. In your ministry, the fire will come. And you will have the same results as those passionate, zealous, peculiar servants of God in the old times. I come into number two there. Number two is the endued Preachers, for already in damaged harvest, in huge preachers, we need something from on high, power from on high, energy from on high, ability from on high. The work is so great that we cannot depend only on our own strength our own power our own past experience we need to be endued with power from on high because the harvest we are getting into that harvest is already endangered and damaged many people have gone before us and they have said things about harvesting about salvation about being born again that is not real, that is not right. And we come now, and we're go if we're going to reverse anything, if we're going to make anything, uh, everything come anew and come afresh, we must have the endowment of power from on high. In Luke chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 49. Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 49, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. And did you listen to how Christ said that? He said, I know the father. And whatever my father, a father in heaven, whatever my father has promised to do to one person, to one family, to one nation, or to the world, or to the church, to the believers. I know my father enough that whatever is the promise of my father, 
nothing in her will change it. And the promise of the Father to you today, nothing will change it in Jesus' name. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Have you noticed that it's a new thing for the apostles? Because whenever Jesus went to the mountain to, to pray, they were in the valley. He went alone. And every morning, he will go there to the mountain and pray unto the Father. He knew how to tarry before the Father. Have you noticed? Any time a miracle was being performed, it was only Jesus and the other. They were onlookers or watching him. They had not been tarrying. Even when he wanted to choose them, he went apart and he prayed. He was the one tarrying. And the one time he called three of them, he said, I'm sorrowful, and I'm sorrowful unto death, and I need to pray. Come along with me. And he tarried and prayed. They were sleeping. You see, the church is used to that. Let the bishop come and pray for us. Let the prophet come and pray for us. Let the minister come and pray for us. The church is not used to tarrying and praying. Yet, if we must be endued with power from on high, the tarrying must not be with Jesus alone, must not be with the apostle alone, must not be with the great minister alone. It says, behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. For how long? Three days? Seven days? Ten days? No. Not the days, not the hours, not the minutes, until, until, until ye be endued with power from on high. When we tarry before the Lord, we know what we're looking for. We're looking for the promise of the Father. We're looking for the power of the Holy Ghost. We're looking for the power that will shake everything shakeable here in our world. We're looking for the power that will possess and penetrate the hearts of men and bring them out of the hands of the devil and bring them to the bosom of the Lord. Endued with power from on high. I pray it will happen. Praying for two minutes may not make it happen. Praying for five minutes may not make it happen. But trusting the Lord that whatever he has said will be fulfilled. Tarry in the presence of the Lord for the purpose of having the endowment of power from on high until, until, until it happens you'll become a firebrand in Jesus name. Number three now, number three is the enduring power. Enduring power for all endorsed harvesters. The Lord sends us out as an harvester of souls and we want to keep that on enduring. Now look at the preachers, the prophets, the ministers, the people of God that went before us. They went on and on in enduring power. Moses, enduring power till the end. Joshua, enduring power till the end. Elijah, enduring power till the end. Elisha, Elisha had even died now and then they had buried him but the grave, the sepulchre was not totally closed off 
yet, and some banks were bringing it, it, some people were bringing a dead man and they spotted the banks that were running after them. And because of that, they were at that time at the grave of Elisha. And when they spotted and sighted the pines running after them, they dropped that dead man so they can run away. And even though Elisha appeared to have come to the end of his ministry, when he dropped that man, dead man, on a dead body, and boasts of Elisha, that, that dead man rose up. Amen. That tells me that the power can reside inside you until the very end of your life. Even look at Peter. When, when he prayed, God answered. When he touched people, God answered. When he lifted up the man in Acts chapter 3, the bone receives strength. But now, Peter, or just walking now, and the shadow of Peter fell on the sick. He had not lost his voice, but even when you lose your voice, he had not lost his physical energy, but even when you lose your physical energy, and what you have remaining is your shadow. Your shadow will heal the sick. Your voice will heal the sick. Your energy, you're able to stand, you're able to point, and you're able to declare, get up on your feet. It will happen. How will it happen? Because you believe, because you accept, and because you know, when I go out and do it, it will happen. But if you don't do, the power will be inside there. But you don't carry it anywhere. You don't touch anyone. Your shadow does not fall on anyone. You don't speak to any challenge in any life. Come out. If you don't speak, if you're not available, although the power is there, nothing will happen. But from today, you will go forth. In the power, in the strength of the Lord. And when you speak, something miraculous will happen. Another amen for yourself. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power is given unto me on earth and in heaven. Look at verse 19. 19, go ye therefore. Hold on. All power is given unto Christ. The power to heal. But nobody will be healed now in Nazareth, Capernaum, Jerusalem, except the people that Jesus told go until they've received the power. And now they go. That's when miracles will happen. Did you notice all those 10 days after Jesus rose from the dead, and those disciples, apostles, they stayed indoor. No miracle happened. They were indoors, but then, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there was a mighty wind from heaven, and clothing tongues as a fire, and it sat on each of them, still outside. No miracle happened. And then they spoke in other tongues, and the Spirit gave them utterance. Yet outside, the place where they were, 
slow miracle happen. They got the power, dynamite. They got the power, healing power, restoration, restoration power, but no miracle happened. And then uh, the people all around, they came, they said, what is this? And then Peter stood up, uh -huh. miracles are going to begin to happen now. Christ has all the power. Is not going to use it directly here on earth. He has all the power on earth until the people receive the power and they stand up. And then Peter opened his mouth. And when he spoke, not something long, very brief, the people said, What shall we do? And he told them, Repent, until he did something until he said something until he invited them into repentance nothing happened and then three thousand people came to know the lord as their personal savior because all power in christ had been transferred to them and they rose up and they spoke and many signs and wonders were done by the apostles not by Christ directly anymore. All the power that Jesus possessed was for their sake, for our sake. And when we rise up and we go forth, all power in Christ will be manifested through you. And the power of the Holy Ghost that the Lord has given will be manifested in Jesus' name. And then he says in verse 20, in verse 20, he says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. How often? I am with you. How often? Even, even, even unto the end of the world. You see with us now. I said, you see with us now. Just looking at us and appreciating us. No. To work is with us with all power. It's with you with all power. But you won't do anything. It'll just be there. All the power you need, it'll be, you know, pumping each into you. You are the one to manifest. He will be there to make sure all power is given unto you. And this morning, can I assure you, Christ of all power is there with you. But if you didn't go out and to, you're not testing the power, you're farming the power, and you are telling that person in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. If you don't say that, the power is there. But the power can only be activated through your voice. It will happen. Why you, don't you then look at that? And all the, you know, people that you meet, you have, they have any challenge, you ask them, what challenge do you have? And they say this and this, and, uh, you know, you say, that's all right. And then you pray. When you pray, power will manifest. One of our dear sisters saw me yesterday and said that I came our country here, Ghana, many years ago. The husband and herself have been having miscarriage, miscarriage, miscarriage five, six times. And then I came and they had opportunity to see me. And um, so the sister started her story. I said, that's enough, that's all right. And she wanted to explain everything so that I will know how serious the problem is. I said, that's enough, that's enough. And uh, so I said, in the name of Jesus, if I didn't open my mouth and uh, it's kind of uh, pour out the power, nothing would have happened. I would say, Jesus, would you know? Jesus is there with you with all power. I say, in the name of Jesus, barrenness, go. Leaving children, come. And 
I said, that's all. She looked at me and said, I said, I had five, six miscarriages. That's how you are going to pray. I said, it is done. Somebody help me shout, it is done. And she saw me yesterday and she said, the first child that came after that short prayer is now at the has finished university now and the second child came is doing this and the third child came and is doing this the same power resides in you a coma see some years ago we had one of our dedicated workers and he was uh, kneeling something and he fell to the ground instantaneously became paralyzed he could have flown her to a team to a crack here but uh, no plane could take him because all the sides were having wounds and it was like it was a terrible situation and then i went for to a uh, commercy for you know a gathering of uh, the believers just to, to share the word of god together and then uh, well, he, had, he had been in that condition for four years and they couldn't pick him. They couldn't. It was excruciating pain. And then we mentioned the name. Of, you can do that too. It's just that I make myself available. And as you make yourself available, wonderful things will happen through you in Jesus' name. And then I mentioned the name of Jesus. I was still praying. We had not come to the final amen. And then I had shout, shout, shout. And as we concluded the prayer, our brother who had been bedridden with all the sores in the body and with no energy and with no strength to stand up, all those sores in the body instantaneously, they were healed. The joints received strength and he was walking. I think, you know, if I remember, you know, walking more uh, faster than I could walk, miracle in your mouth. Miracle coming through your ministry. We have the power and we have the originator of the power standing there and sitting down there with us. And when you open your mouth, power will work and all the other powers that have tied people down all that everything will be taken out of their lives in jesus name we're coming to point number three in point number three we're declaring the end of time possession of holistic healing holistic healing healing for you, the minister. Amen. Amen. Healing for you, the professional. And then you come out and you're still having your profession and your ministry. And the power is with you every time. You say, Pastor, I don't feel the power. Do you feel your intestine as we are sitting down there? Do you feel the inside of your ear as you're sitting down there? Do you feel your retina at the back of your eyeballs as you are there? No. The things we don't feel we possess. The things we don't feel we possess. You're standing. And you have to stand on your bones. Do you feel the bones? No. But the things you don't feel, you possess. What I don't feel, I possess. I thought you were going to say that for yourself. My brain, I don't feel it, but I possess it. And the power, the energy, the resources, the possession, and the know-how, what you are going to do, how you are going to do it, you possess it already. It is when you open your mouth, if you activate what you have, that you will know it is there. I said, 
it is there. You know, I make use of my example so you will know how easy it is that what has happened to me will happen to you. At Magala Lagos in our church, we're having Sunday morning worship. And the people, as they were praying, the prayer session was supposed to stand up and be praying. And so since it was another minister praying, I went down to the congregation, I'm just, just walking around, just walking around. And his sister was, you know, bent her head on the bench in front of her. That morning, I didn't know. That morning, she was so sick. And she told the husband, I don't think I'll go to church today. I'm so sick. I don't think I can take any step. The husband said, I'll support you. I don't want to leave you at home sick like this. You alone. And with nobody to take care of you. And so she managed to come. I didn't know that. But I saw other people standing. And, um, you know, she wasn't standing. And she just leaned her head upon the bench in front of her. And I felt I wanted to, you know, as a good pastor, to not stand up. Other people are standing up. Why don't you stand up as we're praying? And so I gently laid my hands on her. And then she looked up and saw me. Then I did this, get up. Immediately I tapped her so that she could get up. All the sicknesses disappeared. The power will move in your life. I let the power will be activated in your life. But if you don't move around, if you don't go around, if you don't lay that gentle hand on them, if you don't speak that word of power, how will the miracle happen? Your miracle carries from today in Jesus' name. Declaring the end time possession of holistic healing. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the perception of household healing by gospel believers. Number two, the proclamation of holistic healing for global believers. Number three is the personalization of Ezekiah's healing by godly believers. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the perception of household healing by gospel believers. We're looking at Genesis chapter 20, and I'm reading from verse 7. Genesis 20 verse 7, now. Therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Prophet Abraham. Generally, the Israelites don't call um, Abraham prophet. And the king of Gerah, Abimelech, didn't call Abraham prophet. And all the sons of uh, Abraham, they don't usually call him prophet, but God called him prophet. It's not the title they give you. It's the title God himself gives you. And then in verse 14, verse 14 says, and Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah his wife. What if Abimelech said, I don't believe in that. They call it restitution. I don't accept that. 
any woman that comes into my house and I've added that woman to the many wives I have, uh, nobody can take that woman away anymore. He would have died. All in his house would have died. And God would have still brought Sarah out of that house. But this man, Abimelech, accepted the word of God. That's another woman's, another man's wife. That woman belongs to Abraham, not to me. And I'm taking that, and God says, restore that man's wife. Otherwise, you will die. And the man didn't want to die at this time. You will not die at this time. But do you what the Lord had said? That daughter, restore her. You stole her away. That woman, restore him. You must not continue messing up with another man's wife. Restore her. And if you're a woman, restore him. You're not going to keep on messing up with another woman's husband. And when she he did that, look at this in verse 17 now. In verse 17, so Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech. Amen. Amen. Healed his wife. Amen. Amen. Healed his maid servant. Amen. Amen. And they bear children. This day, as you obey the Lord, you are not obeying me. I'm not the originator of the word. God is the originator of the word. As you obey God this morning, infirmity is taken away from your household. Sickness is taken away from your family. And even though, even though, even though Abimelech called all the servants to tell them what God had told him, he was not seeking permission from all those people. God said, I shall restore this new woman that came to her family. What do you say? What? No, not seeking man's opinion. God has spoken. And what God has said, that we will do. A great amen. amen. And so the Lord healed the household. He will heal your household in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, number two is the proclamation of holistic healing for global believers. Holistic healing. That is every part of your life every part of your profession, every part of your ministry, every part of the work of your hand, the healing of the Lord will touch everything, everyone around you, concerning you, in Jesus' name. Look at John chapter 7, verse 23. John 27, verse 23. In the latter part, because I have made a man every week whole. I've made the man every week whole. That means every part, the brain, the blood, the body, the bones, the sinews, the nerves, every week whole. And you can be perfectly whole today. You can be perfectly whole today. That's nothing no part of your body will have any sickness any disease in jesus name every witch hole holistic healing point number three here number three is the personalization of ezekiah's healing by godly believers Ezekiah's healing what kind of healing is that we're looking at second kings chapter 20 in second kings chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 1 in those days was Ezekiah sick unto death terminal sickness 
end of life sickness, incurable disease. In those days was Ezekiah's sake unto them. And the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, Search thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. You see the double emphasis there? Thou shalt die. Isaiah, I understand. That's enough. And then Isaiah said, and not lay, sure, definite, final. And now, Ezekiah's healing. I have Ezekiah's healing. I have Ezekiah's healing. Sometimes, prophecies make us afraid. Prophets make us afraid. And they say, this will happen. And we look at their eyes, so firm and fiery. It's coming from the presence of the Lord. And he has said, this is what will happen. And then because of that fear, fretting, worry, anxiety, put this together. We don't even know what to put together, but not Ezekiah. From today, not you. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it says, Then he turned his face to the wall, away from Isaiah. Isaiah, that's all you have for me on this wonderful day that I will die and not live. All right, please go your way. I know you will not pray for me because you want your prophecy to be fulfilled. You've said it, and you want to be a good prophet, not a false prophet. You want what you declared on me to be fulfilled. All right, you can go. And he turned his face to the wall, and he prayed unto the Lord, the same Lord that said, Thou shalt die and not live. This man had the courage of mind to speak to that God. And he prayed unto the Lord, saying, Look at verse 3. Verse 3 tells us, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and then he goes on to say and i have done that which is good in thy sight he said oh lord look at your record and look at how i've submitted myself to your good way and ezekiah web saw verse four in verse four and it came to pass a fall before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court. So fast God answers prayer. That the word of the Lord came to him saying in verse 5 turn again and tell Ezekiah the captain of my people, the bishop of my people, the pastor of my people, the leader of my people, the says the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have heard thy prayer. I'm coming back to that verse. It was in Kumasi again. I went for one of those meetings I spoke about earlier. At the end of the meeting, a man came to me and he said, this letter written with red ink was written to him. And when he got that letter and he read that letter written with red ink, he turned mental, lunatic, mad, 
And the people who wrote that letter were ready. They went to his house. They patched everything that is going because it's mental now. That's, that was the intention. And he said, please pray for me. I want to have my mind back, my sanity back, my brain, everything back. And I looked at him and said, I don't normally say that, but that's what I said. I said, go back home. All the idols and all the magic and all the occultic power you have gathered all this time looking for solution. Go and demolish them, destroy them, burn them off. Then come back in the evening. I'll pray for you and God will heal you. He said, thank you, sir. He went back home. He packed all those things together. He burnt them. Got rid of them. And then he came back in the evening. And after the ministration in the evening, he came to me. I said, you're the man I saw in the morning. I told you to go and, you know, destroy those. He said, yes, I am. But not the same man. I said, okay, let me pray for you. And I said, no, I'm okay. I'm all right. I said, how? How did that happen? He said, when I got back home, I did everything you told me to do. I looked at every corner and I packed them together outside at the backyard of my building. I bought everything. Immediately, I became well. All the prayer we could pray after that is thank God. The God of power. The God of miracles, the God of all possibilities. And today is your day. And I'm telling you, your life will never be the same again. Yeah. The, the infirmity, the insanity, the disease, the sickness that will have claimed your life. Gone in Jesus' name. I have had. Then it goes on to say that I have seen that he has behold, I will heal thee. And on the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Now that's not the end of the answer to the prayer of Hezekiah. God gave him what? He asked for healing, health, but now went beyond. This morning, the Lord will answer your prayer. He will go beyond what you are asking for. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, and I will add unto thy days, tell me, I will add unto your days. 15 years. Why? All those things you should have done 15 years ago, 13 years ago, 10 years ago, you have not done, God will give you the extra time. You will be a performer, a doer, an achiever, and all the time you need to achieve what you should have done, which, which you have not done, the Lord will give you the extra years in health, in prosperity, in joy, and with the drive and the passion of a go-getter in Jesus' name. Your weakness will turn to strength. Your poverty will turn to prosperity. And your failure will turn to success. Without any rope tied on your feet, you will run and you will not fail in Jesus' name. Where is the person I'm talking about there? You put everything aside now with nothing hindering you. And you stand up and you pray to the Lord. And as we pray to the Lord together today, Ezekiah's healing, Ezekiah's health, Ezekiah's drive, Ezekiah's possession, Ezekiah's passion, the Lord will give unto your life. Don't, why don't you open your mouth and say, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. He will do it. He will do it. I do it myself because of the word. I 
give yourself fully or reservedly unto the Lord, God will yet move in your life. Power will yet move in your life. What a God will serve. What a power we can possess. End time harvesting. Or the power we need for end time harvesting. Or the resources we need for end time harvesting. Whatever the peculiar demonstrations, actions, attitude of the people we are ministering to, the Lord will move through you. The Lord will work through you. Looking at God and not the people. Are they difficult? Go ahead and minister to them. Have you been there before and you failed before? Go back there. You are a different person now. Mighty, powerful, irresistible. The other time you were there, you felt weak. You felt you could not. Go back there. Things are different now. In your heart, in your soul, in your mind, in your spirit. Things are different now. Go back there. You're a different minister, a different professional. Discover the new and time passion and time zeal and time drive that the things that scared you before, intimidated you before, the thing that God did air outside out of your balloon before the energy you have lost has come back all the strength you have lost has come back all the destiny, all the determination you had before had come, had come back all the purity, all the holiness, all the sincerity, all the transparency you had before that now has come back. Passion, zeal, enthusiasm, drive. Everything has now come back. You're a different man. You're a different woman. You're no more the same as you used to be. Now, power, 
resides in you. Faith resides in you. Unlimited possibilities resides in you. Go in this thy power. Go in this thy passion. Go in this thy pursuit. Is what you without power is what you what the divine purpose is with you. But something will only begin to happen when you get up, when you move on, when you open your mouth. And you speak his word through you. And against your healing, also healing, holistic healing. Ezekiah's healing. In Jesus' name we pray. Personalize that. In Jesus' name I pray. Not only amen, say what I say and say it for yourself. In Jesus' name I pray. When Ezekiah prayed, God answered. As you have prayed, God has answered. New power, God has answered. New passion, God has answered. New purity, God has answered. New pursuit, new drive, God has answered. And everything you have asked in prayer, like Ezekiah asked, and God answered, he has answered your prayer. Beyond what Ezekiah asked for, he wasn't asking for 15 years extra, God also gave him that. You will rise higher than your prayer. You will move faster than your prayer. You will live longer than your prayer. Raise that hand up as we are going to have household healing, holistic healing, Ezekiah's healing. Father, in Jesus' name, every one of us will come before your throne this morning. We come to ask for help, greater help than we ever thought we will have, greater power that we ever thought we could have, greater passion that we ever thought we could have. And Lord, as we come this morning to every brother, every sister, every minister, every preacher, every leader, Lord, 
supply them everything they have asked for in Jesus name purity give to everyone power give to everyone passion and zeal give to everyone supportive men and women give to everyone and achievement success accomplishment give to everyone in jesus name healing for the whole man healing for the whole woman every part internal external up down give them total healing complete healing perfect healing in jesus name long life my brother long life my sister long life you will not die at the age your father died you will not die at the age your mother died you will live healthy end time sickness will not come upon your life end of life sickness will not come upon you in jesus name beyond this healing long life long achievement long victory and all the fears of the past maybe i will die maybe i will die it is cancelled from your life in Jesus name Lord look at all your people add value to their lives add years to their life add achievements to their lives you gave as a care 15 years extra whatever number of years you want to give extra but Lord give everyone here everyone here everyone here extra years the devil will not determine how short they live how long they live enemies will not determine how long they live how short they live god the god of heaven the mighty god the god of all possibilities add virtue value strength years to every life confirm it oh lord in jesus name we pray it is done for you it is done for your family it is done for your ministry it is done you have an addition into your life even from this day in Jesus name thank you and God bless you
At this time, we will take our congregational song. We are going to the hymn, Taste So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Taste So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know that says the Lord. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood. Just in simple faith to plunge me beneath the healing, cleansing flood. Yes, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease. Just from, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that thou art with me, will be with me to the end. 